All right, here's, I'm back. My phone died during the uh, Will's Walk and Talk part one, talking about melodies and how important they are, how, how impactful and over time, how a melody can survive hundreds of years being passed. And that must say something, must say something about the nature of the brain and how we um, sort of interface with our world and the sounds in our world, the bird sounds and all that. So melody is so freaking important. And if you, if you look at Stravinsky, one of the most scandalous pieces of the turn of the century that he wrote, which was what? The Rite of Spring. There is melody all over the place. That opening with the bassoon. And so I've been enjoying just working at trying to write a melody that stands on its own that is reflective of the influences that I love, the Irish Celtic influences, and how difficult and fun it is to come up with just a melody without chords, without any structure, without any orchestration, that can that can basically stand on its own and tell a story. And I was talking in the previous video about the New World Symphony. The Czech composer Dvorak came to America, was invited by the National Conservatory in New York to help, he was invited to help set that up. And what I thought is interesting is, okay, you know, we're talking about being so busy, we have all these computers and devices to help us save time, but here Dvorak comes over at the turn of the century, 1893, he's helping set up a conservatory. He has students. One of his most passionate students brings Negro spirituals to him and sings to him <laughs> Negro spirituals, sings to him African American spirituals. And he falls in love with the melodies from that world. And he falls in love with the Native American melodies. And he ends up having enough time to write a full symphony orchestra. Hey, Jerry, can you sing me a, t a, a tone? 12 tone row. Um, yeah, so he, Dvorak ends up having enough time to write the, Dvor the New World Symphony, which is influenced by all these wonderful melodies from America. And he encourages American composers to draw from those influences. So think about this melody. It is so simple. It's diatonic. In other words, it comes from the major scale, the seven notes. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So <clears throat> it starts on the third. Do, do re, mi, up, uh, um. Three, five, five, three, two, one. The melody in itself, they, they call it, the, it was written later with lyrics, going home. It has a sense of going up and then coming back to home. Going home, ba da da, ba da 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 da, la da 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 da. I'm singing it really fast, but that's the Largo to the New World Symphony by Dvorak, which has lasted all these years, which people love, which has been celebrated. That song was played. Um, during uh, the ceremony for uh, um, FDR's funeral, and there's a picture of a man playing that on an accordion and with tears coming down his eyes. You know, it, it's amazing that American music, or that a composer from another country came and championed American music. And did we do that? Yes, I think in a lot of ways we did. We took his cue. But I, I find it really fascinating that Dvorak, you know, here we are so busy, he found enough time without computers to handwrite a full symphony orchestra, help set up the National Symphony and National Conservatory, and have students during his short stay here in America. And that melody has survived the test of time. So we as composers, we as, you know, musicians, you know, what is good music? You know, I might say, you know, the ability to write a melody that sticks in your ear that's, you know, it's very difficult to do that without any chords, without anything. Um, are, are folks going to be singing, you know, bebop solos that they remember? Maybe some folks are. I'm not saying bebop's bad, but I'm saying at the core of all great music is the ability to tell a story with a melody and to tell a story with a simple melody. Everything else around that is just, you know, the structure put around that. It's, it's, it's hanging on by that melody. So uh, there's lots of kinds of music. There's lots of ways that people like to hear music. But if you want to learn how to write a good melody, you're in luck. We're in a great time period because all the scores of the great composers of Beethoven and Brahms and, and the, the Tin Pan Alley composers, Gershwin, Hammerstein, all that music is available to look at, to open up and go, wow, I just have this 
open curious mind and ask how did they write this melody? Why is this melody? Just simply ask, why did this melody stick in my head? Why does it sound beautiful? What is sensual about this melody? Let's take this melody. You know, I could say, well, it's going up a fourth and it's working its way down, right? <clears throat> to the... Um, no, and it's doing kind of a chromatic thing, and it's sort of using that same pattern of rising up to the fourth and then going down in a chromatic way. So there's something really simple. There's a simple structure that's set up at the beginning of that melody. If you look at melodies that have survived the test of time, they have simple structures. A lot of the Irish melodies usually begin with a pickup, right? So like. <clears throat> mi re do or mi re do so it's starting up at the third and coming down to the to the root you know and going down to the six um they use pen the pentatonic scale so come thou font uses the pentatonic scale for the most part until the b section of the melody so we're in a great time if you want to learn how to write or if you want to have fun learning how to write a melody that maybe people will sing and enjoy and start with that melody and put so much around that melody. I mean, you could jazz it up, you could have all kinds of tritone substitutions and, and chord reharms and you could do negative harmony and all that kind of stuff. By the way, has anybody studied negative harmony yet? Harmony yet? Um, I'd love to know if you have. But the basic idea on how the human brain works, most human brains, is that we want to be told a story with a single line melody and it's it's like it's our pathway to go away into uncertainty and coming back to certainty you know there's there's home there's going away from home and then and there's coming back and it all starts with a melody that can do that everything else is added on to that you know i mean if you, see, if you want to strum chords all day, that's great. And if you want to be, listen to ambient sounds, I guess that's great. But are you, are people going to be remembering? I guess I mean I, I, I'm going to ask the question: Are people going to be remembering, you know, an ambient set of chords a hundred years from now? Maybe they are. I, maybe I could be wrong. But I'm just reflecting back on the Dvorak Symphony and the fact that a hundred years later, we know that melody is very simple. It's reflective of of gospel music, and I think that's really cool. And I would love to encourage other composers to to write more mel melodically and not give up on the diatonic scale. I can't believe I'm saying this. It was not the way I was when I was a kid. I wanted to write everything that was different and angular and weird, you know. But now I love exploring the possibilities with writing melodies that are diatonic. Talk to you guys later.